James Comer, half assed art reviewer. The guy on the bike. And we are down on Great Jones Street. Ugh. We're gonna run in here to the Eric Firestone Gallery. And we're I'm gonna take a stroll through a very interesting and timely exhibition of the work of Mimi Gross and it's titled Among Friends 1958-63 Well, I guess it was earlier this week I posted a uh, program on Alice Neal and her show that's over at Daffod's Werner. And uh, in the press release they talk about how Mimi knew Alice and I guess Alice did at least a couple of portraits of her and her then husband Red Grooms. And I guess they were friends We'll start out looking at this piece. This is titled Bagno Aripoli, Forensia 1961, oil on canvas, 78 by 78. Well, there's a, quite a backstory to this show. Uh, part of it is that uh, Mimi, who is the daughter of a very well-known and well-respected and historical figure in the New York art scene, Heimgross, and I believe his wife was Renee, uh, and at some point Mimi took off and went to Italy, and I guess was traveling around going to school there. She said she attended a school that was founded by Oscar Kokochka, and uh, at some point, Red came over and uh, they hired a horse-drawn wagon carriage to take them to, from Florence to Venice. And I guess uh, along the way they would stop and do shadow puppet shows. So this is all happening about 1958 to 63 and uh, there was a lot of changes going on in the New York art scene about that time. There are a lot of pieces here, that, especially with the drawings that I'm not going to get a chance to give you the titles of. These are all 13 and 3 quarters by 9 and a half inches from the Bagno Aripoli sketchbooks from 1961. Well, I came by for the opening and uh, I've kind of uh, bumped into Mimi around the scene over the years. And uh, 
she's quite a uh, quite a spark plug, quite quite spunky. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna guess how old she is these days. But uh, she was here at the opening, and uh, you know, she was uh, holding court. I was very impressed with this whole group of drawings. Uh, Mimi is a fantastic colorist, and uh, she's also one of the people that is doing a lot of wonderful work with pastels. And uh, I bet that's red. I went by her loft, I think it was an after party at one point, and uh, she let people into her studio, and she's got, gosh, a whole area of the studio that's just set aside for the pastels. And uh, she had a table that she just puts her stacks of various types of pastels, various colors on there, and I would say there was probably, it looked like there was 50 pounds of, of pastel. Uh, I was so impressed with this group of drawings. You know, they're all so fresh, and uh, she's got such a, such a uh, finely tuned color sense, it's amazing. Well, as I said, she went to school and studied when she was in Europe. She studied at a school that was, was founded by Oskar Kokotchka, one of the great Austrian expressionists. It's actually uh, a contemporary of Egon Schiller and some other people, and also uh, the Broika group, the German expressionists. And I think, you know, some of that influence comes through in her kind of uh, gothic forms and uh, the wonderful, bold, flat areas of color. Say on a hot summer day in 1961, five friends, Mimi Gross, Red Grooms, Catherine Keene, known as KK Nilo Falturi, and Peter Stanley set out on a road trip from Florence to Venice and back in a horse drawn carriage. The group planned to travel the back roads, sketch the sights, and along the way perform shadow puppet shows and pass the hat. Okay, I guess you probably would have a hard time doing that these days. Just thinking about the liabilities. This is titled Tuscan Afternoon Oil on Canvas 39 by 59 inches. And again, I imagine that's red. Well, I was talking to some people at the opening and uh, we were kind of commenting on the, the quality of Mimi's colors and also how the uh, the paintings have held up over time. So at this point, these are probably 60 years old, something like that. But, uh, and I think a lot of these are probably rolled and then have been restretched at some point. This is a great little uh, portrait. And I love the way that she's got this whole spectrum of, you know, the yellow ochre and the gray and the gray green a little violet and then the kind of the liver pink and uh, yeah, the use of the patterning is nice this is Catherine under the persimmon tree And again, I like, uh, Mimi's got a very nice kind of uh, brusque, confident brush stroke. And uh, 
and just like the uh, the pastel, she's got a real nice uh, spontaneous but sensitive color sense. I think these are a couple of nice groove portraits. So we've got uh, the Grand Street Girls, oil on canvas, 60 by 70 inches. This is 1963. Well, as I was saying, there's a lot of changes going on in the New York art scene about the end of the 50s and into the 60s. One of those changes was that abstract expressionism and action painting and the 10th Street School and all that was kind of getting codified. Uh, it had become a school and it wasn't quite as uh, exciting. On the other side of that was a uh, group of young painters, and some of them weren't so young, but uh, painters that had maybe flirted with abstraction, but always had a kind of a need or desire to maybe connect a little more strongly with art history, and so they always kind of stayed with the, the figure. Uh, Alice Neal might have been one of the people that was a, an example, but uh, there's a whole group. Uh, they talk about Red and a gentleman named Jay Milder, who I met at the opening, and I know his daughter, Rivka. Uh, Red and Jay got together and formed a gallery called the City Gallery. And there were a couple of other places, I think the Jane Street Gallery, they might have been involved with as well. And uh, these artists, that showed that these galleries are all kind of trying to rediscover the idea of figurative painting. I think Phil Perlstein might be another person that was involved with that. Bob Thompson. Okay, so this is the Grand Street Boys. And, uh, well, I don't know who these boys are, but probably some of the local bohemians, uh, maybe poets, musicians, artists, and even their kids. And, uh, again, Mimi is very good at, uh, kind of graphically composing these pictures and then uh, kind of boiling down the, uh, the characters of her sitters. They talk about how Mimi kind of considered uh, portraiture as a, almost a uh, collaborative process, maybe even a uh, performative exercise. This is Kent Hodges. This is Oil Crin, 28 by 22, 1962-63. And uh, if you look at the amount of work that Mimi was doing, you realize she was very, very prolific. Henrietta, 28 by 22. Yeah, you can uh, see that Mimi's got an almost uh, natural talent with her laying on of the colors in the way that she, uh, she'll cover one color with another color and you get a certain kind of uh, a variegated flash of undercolors coming through. This is another portrait of red. Another one I 
just looking at a sketchbook. And again, these are all very uh, unconstrained, very loose, very spontaneous. This is oil crayon on paper, but it also looks like she's got some uh, some paint over the top there. This is Naomi Shore. Cabell Bruselli, and uh, you can just barely see his glasses. Woman with cigarette. The green hat, 13 by 11. On the bus. It's my friend Gwynnie. Joan. I thought this was a very interesting portrait. This is Bob Thompson, who is, uh, has become an icon of uh, kind of that transition between abstraction back into things like pop art and all that. But he was a great uh, painter in his own right, and uh, well, kind of tragically almost set the uh, the template for people like Jean-Michel Basquiat that have a great early period and then uh, kind of pass away young. This is the Jewish wedding, 1963 oil on canvas, 47 by 60 inches. And again, I love this, uh, you know, the bold use of the colors. Nice flat areas against uh, things that are more modulated. And uh, it was a great uh, painter that probably Mimi's father knew and might have hung out with uh, Max Weber, who was one of the early missionaries of modernism. He took off to Paris, met Picasso, Matisse, and all those people, then came back and uh, spent a lot of time converting Alfred Stieglitz to uh, modern painting, but he did a lot of scenes of Jewish life. That painting kind of reminds me of that. Uh, this is on the subway, oil on canvas. 36 by 65. Well, you can also start to see or start to uh, feel some of the uh, kind of energy that uh, I think ended up coming out in some of Mimi's and Red's collaborations with things like the uh, Ruckus Manhattan series that I think Red probably worked on for, I don't know, eight or nine years, some period, but that was all dealing with the, the hustle and bustle of downtown New York, the uh, 
mixture of all the people, commerce. And there's also a kind of a uh, humorous critique of mankind in general. This is a very nice piece. It's titled Subway, 1962, 60 by 60. And uh, boy, Mimi is not holding back on the colors at all on this one. Uh, say the other funny thing is you could probably walk around the corner, go down in the subway and get on a train and see something that would look very much like this. This is titled The Arab Dress, 64 by 49. I was talking about how these paintings are probably 60 something years old and uh, well I was yakking with some of my painter friends and uh, talking about the paintings and uh, well I'm a sucker for painting but I always like to see and realize that paintings are alive and uh, See the uh, little bit of age and all that stuff. I always have the feeling it's like um, opening an old poetry book and finding a pressed corsage in the sheets and pulling it out and looking at it and uh, seeing how, how delicate it is, but also realizing that there's a lot of uh, a lot of the vibrant life that's still kind of hanging on. Great color. A couple more. They look like subway drawings. Subway fiddler. And subway sleeper. And we'll finish off looking at this piece. Via Gewolfa Visitors, Forenza, 1959 to 1960. Oil and canvas, 77 by 77 inches. And uh, I actually think this piece might be the best uh, example of maybe the influences of the, the German Expressionists. And uh, I think Mimi might have if she didn't study with, she might have known Hans Hoffman and a lot of his students. And, uh, well, there was a great student that also died young, Jan, Jan Mueller, who uh, also was influenced by the, the Blau Rider and the, uh, the Baruca painters. So this piece kind of has that kind of an echo, but uh, she captures a lot of uh, great gestures. 
also uh, I keep looking at this uh, circular crackle. James Com reporting on Mimi Gross among friends here at the Eric Firestone Gallery. You can like this, subscribe, recommend it to your friends, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. And as always, we ask you to say thank you, Kate. What's your name? I'm Dizzy. What's your name? Dizzy? Izzy. 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 <laughs> I'm the one that's dizzy. Thanks, Izzy. <laughs> I'm going to give you a bonus. That was good. Okay. Thank you. I so appreciate it.